Hi, I'm Tim Lok. Today we're going to talk about the confinement practice and myth. Confinement practice here is mean after childbirth confinement, and known as two years. It's a Chinese tradition that has been around thousands of years. It basically means that sitting in the mum. After having a baby, new mum are encouraged to stay home for about a month to rest and recover. It's a quite a big deal in Chinese cultures, and there's a lot of rules and practice around it. All right. So when it comes to this confinement period. We are having a new tag of our myth-busting portion. All right, so we are going to focus on the confinement period. There's a lot, a lot of myth surrounding the confinement period. So let's go through them. First, confinement myth is don't shower. Yes, don't shower. Some people will say that you can't even wash your hair. I know that I don't have hair, but for those moms that have hair, they can't wash it. The belief is that the water will cause wind get into the body and lead to headache and arteries later in their life. The truth is, is that there's no basis to this at all. In fact, bathing regularly ensures good personal hygiene and a comfort level. It will reduce incidence of skin and wound infections as well. You don't even need a special herbs bath or anything like that, okay? In fact, if you have a healing wounds like a surgical wound, it's actually better not to take a bath because you don't want to soak in the water. You know, it's okay to get it wet, but you don't want to soak it, okay? So what you can do is you can take a refreshment shower, like whatever temperatures you like the most. Use whatever soap you like the most. It's it's not a problem. Washing your hair is also not an issue at all. You know, if you like me, you like to take shower. You know that when taking shower is like a really relaxing part of my day. So we don't want shower to become a source of stress for a new mom. All right, it should be a source of relaxation. You know, they can relax in the shower, enjoy the shower, use whatever soap they like the most. Oh, that means that they are just keeping it clean. And if you enjoy it, then all the more for you. I think. Having a good hygiene is also really kind to people around you as well. Don't you think that? Another myth that surrounding confinement is that you can't drink clean water. The belief is that it increases water retention, which causes your body temperature to decrease and lead to wind enter your body. The truth is that you need to stay hydrated. You know what? It's really good for a new mom, or at least everyone should drink waters. Okay? Please, please drink plenty of water. In fact. Breastfeeding mother needs more water than normal person. You don't really have to worry about water retention. There's a lot of things that will cause water retention, but drinking water isn't one of it. Okay, if you are otherwise healthy and you drink too much water, all that's going to happen is you're probably going to toilet more. That's it. Oh, not to worry about water will bring anything back to us. Now, a lot of people might notice after giving birth that they are end up going to toilet more. But that's normal because during pregnancy, your body hold onto more water than usual while nurturing the growing baby inside you. But after you have give birth, your body is just like, oh, I don't need this extra water anymore. So just end up you going to toilet more. All right, it doesn't mean that something is wrong. It doesn't mean that you are retaining water. Got it? So it's really important that new mother and especially breastfeeding mother, they need to stay well hydrated. And one of the healthiest drink is water. Just normal water, okay? Water is really healthy for you, and it's got zero calories. So please don't let anyone put you off the ideas of drinking water. All right? If you are thirsty, water is the healthy choice. Always a good choice, you know. No matter what, water is always the good choice. Another myth for new moms during confinement is that they shouldn't only drink rice wine and other alcoholic drinks. The belief is that alcohol it boosts your blood circulation and warm up the body. Is that true? The truth again is there's no medication reason behind these、uh, recommendations. So let's break it down together. Alcohol does not boost your circulation and it does not warm up your body. It could like be, hey, I feel warm when I drink alcohol. What? What is that about? No. What happened here is the alcohol actually widened those. Tiny vessels near your skin surface. So it happen when it start bringing more blood to the surface of your skin, make you flush, turn red, and when you flush, you feel warm, right? That's the warm that you are feeling. This sort of flushing because your blood vessels on the surface are bigger. But hey, it doesn't mean that you are actually warmer. In fact, it can be opposite effect because bring all of this blood to the surface actually cool down your body. 
So rather than getting warmer, you're probably getting cooler, right? And so if you are breastfeeding as well, it's very important to avoid food like alcohol because alcohol can be passed to the baby via breast milk and alcohol can affect the baby's growth and development. Try to avoid cooking with alcohol too. A lot of people think that alcohol is burned off during the cooking process when in fact almost 85% of alcohol is still in the food even after boiling the food. So now you know, you just have to think, you know, just a, a little bit of alcohol might be okay for you. But your baby is so small, you know, the little bit of alcohol it means a lot to them. So it's better just avoid it entirely, especially when you are breastfeeding. It's a miracle if you don't start sweating, if you don't have aircon or fans in your room. Sweating can be irritated wound and increase the chance of infections. So what happened with wounds is that the golden rule is you want to keep them clean and dry. So for personal comfort, there's actually no harm in switching on the aircon or fans. You can even prevent heat rash not just for you but for the baby as well you might see every morning they tend to wrap up the baby like bundle up the baby because it's really cute that way but you have to be mindful as well because they can't communicate as well they might be feeling really really hot all right okay another thing i also feel like i have to mention is that a lot of people they have this idea that you can't have air conditioner or fans or even you can turn it on you can't have it too cold or you can't sit direct in the path of the wind because it will give you the cold or make you sick just to clarify here feeling cold doesn't actually cause a cold it's okay if you want to sit just right in front of the fence the truth is virus give you the cold just like during the pandemic of COVID-19 we are isolating and distancing um, and keeping away from everyone the chance of getting the virus become much lower than normal so when it comes to whether a new mom during the confinement can use aircon or fans, it's just down to personal comfort. You just want to be stay comfortable because being a new mom is so stressful. You don't need to compromise on your personal comfort. Another myth is that you can't read or you can't cry. The idea is that childbirth is believed to impact the liver, which is linked to your eye. So reading and crying will affect your eye health later on in life. The truth is there's no such of logic to this whatsoever. You can read, you can cry. Reading doesn't hurt your eyes. Reading in dim light doesn't hurt your eyes. Reading a book, this cross doesn't hurt your eyes. Watching TV, staring on your computer screen, staring at your phone screen doesn't hurt your eyes. It might cause your eyes fatty, Meaning that your eyes are getting really tired and might need like, oh, your version is a bit blurry for a while, but that's just your eye being tired. It doesn't cause permanent damage. Crying is a good way to relieve stress and deal with the emotion that come with it being a new mom. That's all. Fine. Don't worry about it. If you want to read, then read. If you want to cry, then just cry. It's all perfectly fine. You don't need to worry about it hurting your eyes. So that one less thing to worry. Another myth for confinement mom is that you have to consume more ginger and different herbs. The belief is that you need to restore qi, what we say the energy after uh, childbirth. So it's good to consume these different herb dishes to boost your energies and blood circulation. It's also supposed to boost breast milk production. But the truth is that it's okay to eat ginger, but you should be more careful with other herbs. Some herbs can contain high level of heavy metals and pesticide. Some herbs are medicinal and may pass through the baby's via breast milk. And when it comes to increasing breast milk supply, there's not really a specific food that will do that for you. A lot of people will talk about eating oats, alfalfa, uh, funnels, pumpkin, papaya, etc, etc to boost your breast milk supply but there is not enough evidence showing that will work but what is more important is for the mom who eating a balanced diet full of plenty of wholesome foods and drink enough water that's what is going to help with breastfeeding and the mom's health in general another myth is that the new mom in confinement only can eat meat, liver and herbs the belief is that such food warm up the body and provide protein and iron. 
The truth is that moderate consumption is fine, just like would be for someone else. But just like for anyone else, new mom should not restrict themselves to only eating this food. It's fine as a treat every once in a while, but it should not make up of majorities of your diet. There's a lot of cholesterol in this type of foods. For example, meat in general contains about 77 mg of cholesterol per 100 gram. 100 gram of meat is not a lot. For liver, every 100 gram it contains about 549 mg of cholesterol. That's a lot. That's more than your daily limit. A lot of people think that you need extra or something extra after birth, but in fact, you really don't. Just focus on eating normal, healthy diet, and that is enough. You are going to get all the nutrients you need in a healthier way. I mean, just look at the vegetarian. They don't eat any meat at all. Even after giving birth, they do perfectly fine. So it's not so much about eating a lot of this meat and livers or herbs or anything special. It's more about having a wholesome, healthy diet. The last myth is that a new mom shouldn't walk or move about during their confinement period. The belief is that doing this walking or moving about can increase muscle's weakness after giving birth. When the truth is, it will actually have the opposite effect. If you don't use your muscle, you lose them. So if you don't move around, if you just sit there, hold there, uh, yeah, yes, really comfortable, yes, yes, I know that. But it means that you are going to get increased muscle's weakness. Even if you have a C-section, it's still recommended that you get exercise. Walking or moving around help lower the chance of leg blood clot. Also called deep vein thrombosis for people with healthy pregnancies. It's actually recommended to exercise throughout the pregnancies and after birth. Exercise is not dangerous for the baby. In fact, mothers who exercise tend to experience less problems with pregnancies and labor. After childbirth, you can start gender exercise pretty much immediately. So you don't really have an excuse to just lying around the whole day, okay? If you had the C-section, you have a little bit excuse. And only that just mean that you have to be kind to the surgery wound. But all that mean that you can't do heavy weight living, can't do high impact exercise, and you can't do a lot of sit up, crunches, because that put too much stress on your wound there. But it doesn't mean that you can't get your exercise in other way. So still, not an excuse for not getting exercise. So hopefully when it comes to this myth, when it comes to pregnancies or childbirth or new moms, it's all about just taking care of yourself generally. And a lot of that advice is universal. So it's like things like drinking plenty of water, eat plenty of wholesome plant foods, and get plenty of exercise, okay? Comment below if you know any other myth about new mom confinements. Share this info with your friends and families. If you think it helped you, it will help them as well. Like and subscribe my channels and hit the bell button icon so you won't miss any update. I'm Kim Lo. See you in next video.